Good evening, I am Kwame Abdul Bey. I'm one of the co conveners of the Arkansas Peace and Justice Memorial Movement, and I'd like to welcome everyone this evening for the second of two days uh, here in the state of Arkansas. We are, we are observing for the first time the National Day of Racial Healing. Please, everybody, give yourselves a hand for being here. Uh, if everyone could please uh, silence your devices because we're getting ready to have a really great performance uh, that they're going to require your undivided attention. So if people's telephones are ringing, that's going to distract some people. Also, if you want to uh, discuss what you're doing here tonight on social media, please use the hashtag uh, how we heal as it's written on here. All right. So the National Day of Racial Healing is a, an event that started about four years ago uh, and it came out of uh, the uh, W.K. Kellogg Foundation when they decided that they wanted to uh, reallocate uh, the funds that they were giving to the nonprofits that they were funding and they decided that but what we're going to do uh, from this day forward is all of our grant money will go to organizations that deal with racial equity. And they decided to create an event that highlighted this uh, new thought process of racial equity. And there are several other uh, there are several other uh, grant grant uh, giving. Uh, foundations that have followed their leads like uh, the Ford Foundation, uh, the Rockefeller Foundation as well. And they decided that to st strategically place this day uh, right after uh, the uh, Martin Luther King holiday. And the reason they decided to do that is because Martin Luther King, he had a message that did not end in 1963. A lot of us are taught uh, that uh, the I Have a Dream speech was the last speech that he gave, but uh, that was in 1963, he died in 1968. So those five years that we rarely hear about, those are the years that led to, eventually led to his death. And that's why they decided to place it here because I want to read you guys uh, the introduction to a speech that he gave uh, just a month before he was assassinated. And this speech uh, is called The Three Evils of Society. It says, three major evils, the evil of racism, the evil of poverty, and the evil of war. These are the three things that I want to deal with today. Now let us turn first to the evil of racism. There can be no gainsaying of the fact that racism is still alive all over America. Racial injustice is still the Negro's burden and America's shame. And we must face the hard fact that many Americans would like to have a nation which is a democracy for white Americans but simultaneously a dictatorship over black Americans. The fact that we still have much to do in the area of race relations. And there is no area in our country that can boast clean hands in that area. So that's what our goal is uh, when we talk about the day of racial healing is we want to use this day, use uh, this experience that we're having here to uh, galvanize our spirits to walk out of here and actually do something towards healing ourselves and our communities. And the thing is, is we have to make sure that we bring the right people to the table to ha start having those conversations. So that's what the National Day of Racial Healing is all about. And with that said, I would like to bring to the stage Reverend Dr. Denise Darnell, uh, of the Human Rights Campaign of Arkansas to go ahead and get us started.
So here we are at the Ron Robinson Theater, located in the River Market District in Little Rock, Arkansas. The River Market District we love. Some of us enjoy it every single day. Others of us on occasion, but still, we come, we eat, we enjoy, we are entertained, all in this district. This district is located in the oldest part of the city that was once known, or is still known, as Quapaw Quarter. And I just knew that I was gonna come and tell the story of the blood that continues to flow underneath our feet as we think about the First Nation people of the Quapaw Nation. But I don't even wanna talk about that tonight. Because the fact of the matter is that the Quapaw Nation is still alive and well. And in 2014, the Quapaw Nation purchased 160 acres near the Little Rock Port Authority because they had found out that hundreds of their ancestors were buried underneath that ground. And they wanted that land. They wanted the land so that they could honor their people just like we've come tonight to honor our people. And when they purchased the land, they decided that they wanted to make an application so that they can get the Bureau of Indian Affairs to declare it a federal trust land. In other words, they wanted to make this land sacred because here their ancestors died. Here our ancestors died. And when they decided to make this application, the local people said, mm-mm, mm-mm, we don't want you to call this land sacred. How dare you choose to honor your people? This is white folks' land. And so the Pulaski County officials decided to petition the Bureau so that they would deny the request of the Quapaw Nation because they said, uh-uh, they just want it for a casino. How racist is that? That was just in 2015. And then in January of 2019, y'all, this is just January of 2020. Yeah. January of 2019, as it stands, as the record reads, the Quapaw Nation negotiated the reselling of their land back to Pulaski County officials whoever owned it. And so what about that blood that continues to run underneath that land that's near the Little Rock Port Authority? And what about the blood that continues to run underneath our feet right here because we can't seem to get this thing called racial justice right? And so we're here to talk about that. To stand on the shoulders of all who have gone before us. To bring into the room the Quapaw Nation. To think about Dr. King and the movement. To think about black folks and people of color. To think about racism that continues today. And so this conversation is important because it's only until we raise up and continue to have the conversations that draw people into the real talk of racism and the evilness of it. It's only when we do that, that we will learn hashtag how we heal. So thank you for being here tonight, for standing up against racism, for agreeing to have the conversation with anybody and everybody when you leave here, and to remember the Quapaw Nation and the blood that runs in this ground. Remember black folks, people of color, and the blood that continues to run under the ground and decide what you're gonna do about it.
Ancestors' wildest dreams, like I was walking through that REM cycle. Ten, Ten bottles and two stone tablets. My commandment of a spirit is a hard pill to swallow, and everything that I accomplish will be a hard act to follow. I am a leader. I am a leader. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams because these roots go deeper than roots, deeper than this. That's why I got these deep views. Be afraid of my gusto. Gusto! That my ancestors have placed in my room. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. Like he is not the only thing living inside of me. Like my predecessors ain't paved the way for me. My groom of a prize shall be waiting for me. Hopefully. At least that's what my foremothers promised me. They have whispers like roars, and I'm fulfilling every dream. Summer and the wind is talking. Summer for the very first time. With the melodies, the poles you taught, and you pictures in paradise, said we will rise up to the light in us. Let your olive joy burn your flame through the night. Just a speck in the universe, not just some words in a Bible verse. You are the living word, uh, you part of something way bigger, bigger than you, bigger than we, bigger than the picture they framed us to see. But now we see it, and it ain't no secret, no. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. Black essence flowing from within me. I am a brown skin diamond, rough but still glistening. I am, I am the last thing there is and the last thing before there will be. I come from a line of African giants and I wear my crown proudly. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. My soul is a home for grace, grace and, and mercy. mercy. My mind is a blessing under sky. So when you hear my words, you gon' see me shine because the color of my skin is golden. And only the special ones 
were chosen. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams because I am confident. The part of the line that's not afraid of the truth. It said my youth makes me bolder. And as I get older, I realize these shackles that are across my wrist are not real. Okay. Oh, oh, bigger. You're part of something way bigger. Bigger than you, bigger than we. Bigger than the picture they frame us to see. Legacy, oh, you're part of something way bigger. I am my ancestor's wildest dream. Blessed with the ability to materialize my every ambition with the knowledge given to me by my people before me. Standing on the shoulders, shoulders, shoulders of my people working hard for the things that will bless them all in due time. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. Roots of a titan, son of a queen. Once in a lifetime, I count blessed by any means. Royalty everlasting. And if you ask me a priceless portion of boundless fortunes, all this in the world, I'm so much more than the devils aborted and God endorsed it. You're gonna rise. You're part of something way bigger. You're part of something way bigger. Bigger than you, bigger than me, bigger than the picture that framed us to be. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I understand the truth about that question in your soul. Look up, don't look down, and watch the answers unfold. Life is your birthright, they hit that in the fine print. Take your pen and rewrite it. Step out your essence. Step in your essence and know that you're excellent.
with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness beset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I got oil wells pumping in my liver room? Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hopes freaking hot, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my sofa cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it off for hard, because I laugh, ha, 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 like I got gold mines digging in my own backyard. Out of the hut of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that is rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide, rolling and swelling, I bear in the tide, leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that is wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestor gave, I am the hope and the dream of a slave. I rise, I rise, and still I rise.
to leave you out of this opportunity. If there's one that you are remembering tonight and you would like to call that person into this space, to invite their lives for us to remember, for us to be revived again, we offer you this space if you would like to lift up the name of the one you remember. There's a reason why the lights that burn tonight on this stage are LED lights. We chose not to use a living flame because we want you to be the living flame. And we will not be snuffed out until freedom is won for us all. speechless. I really am. We're going to take about a seven minute intermission and then we're going to come back and we're going to start uh, with our film. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 